And low, 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 I am Rangaroo. And I'm Graham. Here today of another 1v1 from the bronze match uh, setup for the mm. uh, Wargame Bootcamp Discord <laughs> Elite Tournament. This is game three. We're on a high rate of show. We know who's playing, but what are you playing, Graham? So today, Rangaroo, we have Krot playing as um, Baltic Front um, Unspect, And then on the left, we have Balance playing as Scandinavia General. Yeah, and right off the bat, we got the beast going right in the hot, and yes. plus the magic dragon is going to go right after him. We've actually seen this before. I don't know if it was these two players, but we've seen we've casted this exact matchup before. Um, the decks were different, but we've watched a puff be called out to chase off a, a Mig Twenty One Bis. Yeah, that's, that's happened in the archives. Indeed, and the beast coming in, shooting off all its missiles. Actually, having a really cool loadout. I forgot it has R Sixties and A Nines. Mm -hmm. Put War Thunder players in the suicide watcher. Yeah. yeah, the Big Twenty One Bis is like almost one hundred. It's a, it's one of the best cheap fighters you can actually bring in the game. You talk about like having the two separate R sixty, you know, R sixty M's and the AIM nine E loadout. Though he's, I'm surprised Krot hasn't recalled it. He's gonna try and go for the puff here. I mean, it does obviously have the twenty three millimeter auto cannon, but the puff does have missiles. Yeah, it does not seem like a well for all thing. <laughs> But the puff does bugger off, but one. yeah, he's going to run out of fuel on the second base. is going to come up. Yeah, and then the other base comes out, which is actually going to open up the um, HKP4C right there for damage. Okay, no, the KT actually pushes it back. Um, no, yeah, it gets shot down, so the infantry inside there is going down. Puff the magic dragon, tries to engage another bis and fails to... And actually, oh yeah, down to 1 HP right there. Um, almost getting it. But a very, I don't want to say a heavy air opener. Both sides are pretty cheap airplanes but yeah getting a few helicopter snipes here and then just looking at the actual ground game things aren't oh. really all that crazy I mean, we got two m2 rogues down south and cross is just going to be bringing up infantry reinforcements because they're currently pretty home alone down south yeah their infantry um the recon infantry in front of them was sniped in the transport by the fox from yager so there's no support here whatsoever for the m2s funny enough rain last time we casted with some m2 wilks was on highway to seoul and they proved to be like the decisive factor in a victory which i that was probably almost a year ago we casted that game i think that was jackie so i'm curious to see how much impact they have because i think for 120 points they're a great buy for this deck yeah, I mean, 20 AP, 17 frontal armor. They can actually, well, I say deal with the majority of the tanks against balance, but, well, the only scary tank balance has <laughs> is Leopard 2 yeah. AE5s. Ooh. So, yeah. Up north, there's a big infantry engagement. The LKV goes down, so there's no AA here for balance whatsoever. His Fox from Yager and Northern Yager trying to engage here, but the spikes. You know, already slamming, taking out a piece, trying to see if he can go ahead and get the Leopard 1A5. You now he's gonna get behind cover there and get, you know, get a safety. But nice little infantry push here with the KTs backing it up. Yeah, just a good amount of fire support, as you can see, can really turn the tide here. He is gonna rush in the KTs, which may be a little bit premature because there's some pretty good anti tank on the infantry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, though this is pretty quality infantry here altogether, but the KT's got some really good damage in. Now the Jakari um, would have to go and screen for them, and I don't know. Think you want your Jakari here engaging in the open, kind of like this, because the Fox from Yager, they'll lose that fight. Um, but the KT's have actually completely backed up and kind of left them on their own. Interesting fact about Krot's deck ring is he only brought Finnish infantry. Hmm, I approve. Yeah, we only, only got four cards. Oh, he's yeah. just going for, like, the mech spam of Yakari yeah. only. Yeah, he's doing a really big Yakari, like, just spam. Which, uh, Yakari are pretty, you know, pretty nice for the price. But there are, like, especially when we see, like, you know, other um, Baltic Front decks, like, the, the Polish paratroopers are typically brought. Um, so, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not like the Polish infantry is, like, the greatest thing on the planet. He's gonna... This is an interesting move. To like really utilize his fire support extremely effectively, including artillery and airstrikes as well. Because especially once you get into CQC fight, tree C, yeah. I mean the Scandies, especially in this case from the mm -hmm. balance deck, has a lot of pretty damn good specialized and elite troops. So yeah, at close range, the car is gonna get bugger. Yeah, absolutely. Point out the Bis was able to catch the puff all the way towards the top. So he was able to dive in there and get a nice little snipe. Now that's a huge deal for either player really, but just a, a minor little air victory there. <laughs> For, uh, for Krot. Mm -hmm. getting, some, getting some more value out of those mix 21s The base coming in once again as well. But this has been a very 
like, slower opener, really. I mean, it's going pretty damn good here for Croc just because he's getting position up north in yep. Charlie, but Delta and especially Echo is really quite quiet. Yeah, and the Imshu fight's actually really ghetto in Charlie because both of them have like had a couple squads with a, a minute amount of support, and even there, like the uh, helicopter was providing some fire support with the Biss coming in, cleaning it up. Another helicopter being bought by Balance. Okay, so he actually called an F-16 here, so he's going to try and go ahead and put an end to this MiG-21 play. And if this is anything like War Thunder, the Biss needs to get the hell out of there. Yes. Especially all the way up north, that's a bit of a dangerous place to be putting the Biss. F-16. Oh, yeah, there she blood in the water. Yeah. Gonna yeah, kill first... that. Yeah, he yeah. gets annihilated right there. That 100% could be a War Thunder match. The first mm -hmm. Sparrow hits, second one follows up, and F-16. That's actually going to be enough, I think, for the for the immediate sense. Those F-16s are pretty good for their price. And if Balance could get some air superiority going and get some of his aircraft engaged, you could see it, you know, really... Scandinavia has a pretty potent air force behind it. Mm -hmm. I think it's might start in, you know, an aircraft arms rule. Because Croc still Ooh. also... I mean, both sides have a lot of fighters. And we've got yeah. the mm -hmm. and the F-18 available for Croc. I mean, this map, airplanes can be pretty good because you just have the entire northern sector to yeah. really play around with. Yeah, you have a ton of room to for airplay on this map. That's why it's so common. And you, Great point, Rang. And you see here the Biss going to dive in. And if he can get another snipe on this infantry, I mean, even there, they start to pay for themselves because he's sniped multiple infantry units, a um, couple of helicopters, though he's actually not going to go and dive in there, which is probably smart. There's the LV um, KV down there. Mm -hmm. But he's just being really annoying in Charlie. Yeah, and honestly, you don't even have to fully capture Charlie. You see it's usually a lot from people who start from the ghost side. If you can yeah. just hold on to that, you know, forest area in the north of Charlie here, that's a great position to hold on to, especially, you know, all the Yakari infantry spam, get some cheap tanks as well, and you can really turn that place into Fort Knox. Yeah, it's a can be really annoying. Ooh, F-16 diving in is once again going for the Biss. Does get the hit, but he's not able to get around. So now the Biss has a chance to snipe oh. his F-16 here, and he will. Plus, there's the finished Terminators on the ground, and that's a really big pick for Krog. Mm -hmm. Then once again, just like the double missiles really proves to be powerful because you can basically shoot two at once, double barrel shotgun style. Yes, it's 100% double barrel shotgun with air-to-air -air missiles. Mm -hmm. Hot. It's, it's pretty hot. I mean, you definitely need it to uh, you know, guide the missile of the heat signature. I will say, Renning, this is an interesting fight, you know, just match overall, because both players going heavy Charlie Golf is pretty uncommon. Most of the time, it's either one player picks to do that, or both players kind of just leave it as, like, you know, a demilitarized zone until later on the game where they need to get an edge somewhere else, because the Delta Echo fighting has been almost non-existent this match. Yeah, I mean, Kroos has gotten a better position into Delta, yeah. really through very little bloodshed here. But he hasn't right. completely evicted Balance out of here, so he's not like he has it really under control. And now he is starting to move up those M2 ropes, and just looking in Delta, there's really not a whole lot of anti-tank to stop him. There's a few ATGM infantry, and they are scary, that's about yeah. it. Yeah, they are pretty nasty, especially the one big downside to this, the uh, Swedish HGM infantry is the range, but they do have good accuracy and they have good AP. But, I mean, it wouldn't take a lot for Krat to actually evict, uh, evict balance from this position. Oh, there we go. Yeah, HGM's opening up, but automatically engaged right there, missing the first shot, and they're probably going to go ahead and die here. A CV is being brought into Golf, and another one's probably going to go into Charlie. At the same time, a CV going to Delta. So we're going to see, you know, Cross really going for get three zones capped up, and then he'll be able to just build up his forces from there. And honestly, it's probably a smart move because I don't really see a lot here for balance to take advantage of that many points being dumped in the CVs in such a fast time. Mm -hmm. It seems either like Crot has been traded more efficiently, or balance just hasn't brought a whole lot of stuff. There's more, you know, powerhouse units on the map here on Crot's side than really right. isn't balance. Balance feels like it's just kind of balancing it out, so to speak, just along a lot of cheap, you know, mediocre stuff, and he hasn't really been able to get any major engagements here, either in Delta or in Charlie. Yeah, nothing really going on here for him. Uh, it just kind of seems like he's 
taking weird engagements. I think it's a you know a good way to put it. Rang. There's just nothing crazy's happened. Nothing bad. You know, really too bad has happened. But it does feel like Balan or Krat has a little bit of momentum. And these Wilks here, if they can get good positioning, they'll be able to just clean up just about anything down here. And we even see Balance actually grabbing a beat cam. Hmm. Interesting. We yeah, I mean, the BKN's great. I'm just kind of curious at the current time why, why buy it. Really needs a frontline unit. So it's not like uh, yeah. Game 2 where the BKN really proved its value because of just how yeah. static Hell in a Very Small Place can be. Right, right. I mean, Delta can get static -y if you fight heavily over that, but we're not really seeing any of that. You really just need, like, you know, some tanks on the front line, some Leopard 1A5s or a Leopard 2 a 5 to really help out. Yeah, and there's a plus two for Krat right now, which is, you know, it's significant. Anytime you're getting a plus two on your opponent, you're doing pretty well. We see here infantry getting sniped once again in the open. It is just, you know, poor Norwegian reserve infantry, but still, it's annoying to lose your infantry inside of transports. Yusakari will finally get killed off here in Charlie, and maybe this is the end of the Charlie shenanigans, but if so, it's, it bought Krat a decent amount of time, and there's not necessarily a ton here to counterattack with if you're balanced. Yeah, he's got a nice little point advantage of 70 or so points, and he's also managed to, well, almost completely a big balance out of Delta, and he still has those two M2 Rilks, which are absolute powerhouses. So if he can just keep the pressure up into Delta now, and just play a bit more defensively and go, yeah. he should be pretty good. And there's still, like, we've completely forgotten about Echo from both sides, and I think both players have also just forgotten about Echo. Yeah, they really don't seem to care about it too much. I mean, sometimes that happens, it can be common, but... I am more surprised that they are both throwing down pretty heavy up here on the northern portion of the map. Uh, we do see that Krat has bought a Eurogen, which is pretty common for a lot of Baltic Front players. It's a very popular vehicle for good reason. I'm curious to see where he decides to employ it and how he does, especially since now both players have dipped into the heavy artillery in this match. Mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, you just don't see two sides invest heavily no. in the heavy no. RT. There's also, yeah, if the Oregon, does he use it to, like, stress our infantry and then follow up with pushes, or does he try to snipe the odd unit here yet? Yeah. yeah, and uh, you're right, Rang. It's very rare that we cast these top-level players, and both of them decide that they want to dip into the heavy artillery game. It's typically one player does it, and the other one either, you know, it's costly because they didn't do it, or it turns out well for them because it didn't... Uh, oh, he's you know, counter battering. Oh, he is counter battering. yeah, so we're going to... This is surprising, so it doesn't it really isn't that common in top of only ones, but balance does see it. First shots are like a little short. I mean honestly I almost be worried that the Jurgen accidentally kills the C V. Yeah. And <laughs> no, as you can the see those long range MLRS, unless you're using clusters, not really a well oh, great got... in the counter battery rule. No, but he got really close to the C V a couple times there. Um I think that was about three really pre yeah, pretty yeah. close drops uh, that might be a sign for balance not to test that again obviously nothing gained there whatsoever by Krat, except maybe say hey i've got heavy artillery you got heavy artillery you better keep moving your stuff you know like if this is a 10v10 keep your artillery on the move but i'm not really sure oh, how much Rilk moving that. in close taking a yeah. very nasty missile yeah this could be a nice pickoff here from balance but they pull off jackson in the nick of time but that's gonna buy him a little bit of time at least for his you know more elite infantry to mop up the akaris yeah, and that's the big problem here with this infantry is that it is Nordzon Jaeger, it is Falcon Jaeger going against just base Jakari, and they do trade out pretty well against him. Oh, Eric's being launched and gets, oh, oh. really nice split there by Krat. The missiles are going with the APC. One of the Wilks is hidden. He's going to try and back that out there. And that's just a big advantage right there, you'll see by balance, is that his infantry quality is really good. Mm -hmm. And he also has good, like, better, cheaper fire support, because you got all the M41 Walker Bulldogs, you have pretty decent IFEs as well, they also crop does have decent KTs, but just that yeah. mix of, you know, uh, shock infantry and the Bulldog, especially in these firefights, if he was to really utilize both, he can really annihilate the infantry. The ropes are a little bit more of a challenge, but hey, you got Eryx's. Yeah, and the Eryx is, as we all know, it's a nasty missile. You don't want to mess with it. You pair that with your sweet, with your ATGM infantry, and like you said, some nice little fire support, and you have a really nasty combo there at Scandinavia. Now, the downside is that if you can leverage your tanks, you know, effectively as Krat, 
they're going to be pretty hard to deal with, especially because there's, there's really not a lot of counters for balance. So we do see he has bought one of them. It's the STRV-121. So the Swedish Leopard is on the battlefield moving forward, and he is now the big dog of this map. Hmm. And it is, yeah, for crotch side, that one C area. Yeah, the, the C area is um, ATG, I'm playing correct. Yes. Yeah, so I wouldn't be too surprised if we don't see, if we do end up seeing that on the battlefield, because that would be a pretty juicy snipe. Oh, one of the Wilkes was sniped. Oh. Yeah, one of the Wilkes was sniped, so it does go to, I mean, I only see the... Yeah, it's only the one left. And it's yeah, the yeah. HP one. Yeah, so the full HP one got sniped by something. I'm not sure what, but it is dead. Now, the STRV-121 is going to come up here. We're going to probably see some heavy combat as Krod does try and put down a CV. Again, an Echo, trying to keep it smoked up there. Obviously, Balance knows exactly where it's located, but the plus two is pretty nasty for him. Just continuing to build that lead. And now, in response, and I don't think Rang that Krod has seen the STRV, but the T-72M1 mod is out. So, the Finnish heavy hitters are coming to the play. Yeah, so now we're also for the fight being, you know, bottlenecked into downtown area. I've seen the Bacan really start to get its value because just how, you know, clumped up all the crotch infantry is. And, I mean, the man's a sniper on the supply trucks as well, forcing the rogue back. Still only on 1 HP, so denying that tank from actually being combat effective, which is going to buy him a bit of time to get up, get up his infantry and also to start using his leopard. Yeah, and the Jurgen does fire in response, but it once again it accomplishes nothing. It does stun the Swedish HGM infantry, but that eight, that um, ex, they're already out of ammo, so it's not like panicking them. It's actually that big of a get for him currently. So a lot of wasted ammo so far by the Jurgen for no real accomplishments. And we do see the STRV-121 starting to engage, trying to push out this recon infantry as the the poor Norwegian reservists with their bolt action rifles <laughs> try and you know make something happen. Like, isn't that like a literal 19th century run? The crack yeah, the crack. Something? Yeah, That's the crack. I think is a uh... American useful period. Yeah, of time. yeah. We converted it from something. I forget what it was, but it's like essentially it was converted into a um, a bolt action rifle. Mm -hmm. Oh, the M2 Wilk engaged the STRV. Both of them trading shots, but the Wilk is down to one HP. STRV will have to back up though, but. That's a nasty little engagement. Though, then again, if the mod can get involved here, that could be a huge win for Krop, because then he could, you know, kind of just let the M2 oh. soak the damage, but I'm not sure if he would be able to. Yeah, the M1 mod is definitely going to be a good counter here as well. I mean, yeah. Finns just have that crazy APFSDS ammo for whatever reason. Don't know how they managed to pull that off. But, yeah, where they get that from? I, it's not really much of a push left here from Balance. Like, the Dakari, just the sheer numbers of it, is buying him enough time just to, you know, get these effective trades here and there. But Balance invested so much in that SCRV one to run he hasn't really been able to bring up, you know, the foot sloggers, those extra shock troops to actually, you know, take the bloody right. territory. He's been relying on bloody reserves. Yeah, and he's got to bring up more infantry, and a big problem for him is there's another M1 mod coming out right here. So Krotz is doubling down on the heavy tank play here. He realizes that he has the advantage here. He can leverage that armor into probably, you know, a victory in, in these types of fights. Because he, as long as he doesn't get sniped, you know, which obviously can happen. That's total, totally plausible. But this armor is going to be really hard to deal with. And now you're going to have three, you know, basically heavy tanks on the map at one time. That's, but even for someone as good as balanced, that could be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're down, Ring. Like, when you're when you're down right now, you're 156 points. And while well, I don't think there's been some massive trade to say, like, hey, balance is trade poorly or anything like that, but the vibe from the pretty much the opening minute of this game is that Krot's kind of in control and dictating the pace of it. And it just kind of... It's hard to see, like, with the units coming onto the field here for balance, how does he take control back from Krot and start to get a tick going? Because as we reach the halfway point, you want to see some form of momentum. Mm-hmm. Is it definitely at the start I've noticed or it felt a balance kinda of gave a little bit more territory than he could have mm -hmm. without as much resistance, especially in Delta. Right. And now he's having to fight from that, you know, downhill position back uphill and yeah, we're at like what, hundred and sixty five point point advantage oh. now here? Oh, Okay, SDRV has peeked out. It's engaging the M2, uh, the M one mod right there, both throwing down shots. Weapon jam on the SDRV. Oh. And still over half health for the mod. He needs to back that up, but it's completely out of the fight and down at 3 HP. And if there's a little bit of infantry here for Krod, I think he can really exploit this. Goddamn, having two mods and an M2 Rilk, that's, that's kind of a snowball effect, right? Yeah. 
Valen's gonna have a very difficult time just seeing the Oh, really it's close shot of the Jurgen actually getting a stun on the SCRV. Ooh. The smoke is really is nice here by balance, you know, covering it up and trying to keep that heavy Swedish heavy tank alive. But I don't know, this is looking actually really dire. If she getting Fox are getting sniped here on the road, they are able to gather transports. That's a lot of Jakari, and well, even though the Jakari will probably die, uh, you know, Krat hasn't seemed to care whatsoever if his Finnish infantry, you know, lose their life. Like, he's just mm. continuously calling out, uh, you know, a ton of them. Yeah, it just buys him time. He also just has out a heavy mortar, which is... Oh, no, it's not a heavy one. This is a regular run fire. Yeah, really. He's been actually been getting some pretty good hits this entire time as well. Yeah, and he... Really nice play overall by Crotty. You can see this. He brought an Ito 90, you know, trying to ensure that there's no plane action, you know, or at least, you know, dissuade it or any helicopters around his heavies. And he's kept his BIS on station because he feels so comfortable knowing that he sniped that F 16 and he sniped a puff. So, you know, really at this point, if you're balanced, you know, are you, are you willing to spend the big boy money to get a high quality ASF out to deal with these? And then you got to dip into your more points into the planes if you want to deal with the heavy armor. And it just kind of feels like Croc is reading the situation very well and is just kind of exploiting it. Yeah, because uh, balance has gotten out an automatic in response to the base. Yeah. And I mean, it is like, uh, it is the automatic up in the end of the day, but it's not going to be able to deal with three rather heavy tanks here. No, he needs big boy firepower. The B-can is not going to be it. Now, that one mod is damaged because of the STRV, but all he has to do is get another supply truck, back it up, and let us wilk. And the other one, you know, just kind of play that game. The Eriks might be the best way if you can get a side shot with an Eriks. For the KT, he's going to kill that Fox from Yager. Yeah, they're going to go down. The other one's down at 2 HP, pulling back. Oh, all, all those squads are actually really beat up right now. Hmm. Yeah, really the only thing he can fall back on is the infantry. If he can kind of fight close quarters with him, bait the tanks in and get, as we saw, like one or two, you know, good snipes, that would be, you know, quite shrill. But that's yeah. just not going to happen. It seems like he's going to get evicted out of doubt here. The Dakaris, you know, being the meat shield for the tanks. It's just worked out very well with that one-two combo. Yeah, and a nice attack into Echo there by balancing. He takes the point, drives off the CV. But I'm not sure how far can it go, because it is M41s. You know, the Walker Bulldog is a nice infantry support vehicle. It's cool. But is he going to, you know, go up, slam into the, the flank here of Krat into Delta? I mean, maybe, but that's all it takes. That M1 mod could be on 1 HP, and it could deal with all that. Yeah, quite easily. Then we're also seeing T'Challa as well, Krat's been doing some shenanigans up here. Actually getting an Ikari very close to the CV, oh, yeah. so that's really probably going to get a snipe. Yeah, and it's kind of funny that we haven't really paid much attention to Charlie Golf in the past, you know, five to ten minutes. And re really, Cross just kind of picked away at a couple pieces. You know, the Coast Jaeger, look at them, they're down at 3 HP. They have really accomplished nothing whatsoever. They haven't even fired a shot. So I'm assuming their helicopter was shot down. There were some survivors. But yeah, that CV and Charlie is probably going to die. Yeah, and then the CV and Delta as well. He's got stunned by the artillery. Yeah, the Akaris are moving up, and there's only two Falchim. There's no Falchim Eagles left to really defend yeah. at. Yeah, one did a nice hit on the Wilk, and the SCRF coming over here with the, with the Bofors trying to get on its side, but this is a War Thunder, so that's not going to work. The block does, you know, the block 5 does come in with the Rock Eyes, but I think he's actually going to... Oh, no, he should get it here, yeah. Yeah, good spread there. He does get the kill, but it kind of feels like a little late, especially as Charlie is now completely collapsed. Mm -hmm. Oh, the automatic actually going to be defending the point, so... Fine time for the CV, but Charlie, yeah, just gets completely sniped. Yeah, and Krat really does smell blood in the water. He's got he's got a CV already going on the way to Charlie. I mean, I think maybe a little more infantry to help kind of like buff up Delta, and he probably has this game in the bag. I mean, the STRV is coming over right here. I mean, it should deal with the Jakari just fine, but... He's already going towards base. He's got the KT down the highway. Oh yeah, the KT's on the move <laughs> with infantry loaded up. You know, it's a little thunder run action. I do think one of the mods went down though. Oh, oh it doesn't matter because Krot takes the dub, and that's a tier. Very close KD here. Yeah, I never thought that it felt like Balance was trading poorly by any means. It just kind of felt like he took a poor engagement off the start and maybe, like you said, Rang, ceded too much territory, and then it just kind of like, you know, it just kind of fell off from there. But it's never like the one moment where you can say, oh, he was playing poorly, he was trading really bad. He, that never happened. It just seemed like Krat was just 
slightly winning a bunch of little engagements, and sometimes in war game that's all it needs, and then eventually it falls apart. Yeah, there like there's no crazy, you know, final push or turnaround like we saw in game two. It's just a pretty standard, you know, back and forth engagement. You know, I take a punch, you take a punch, but just like you said, the initial positioning from Crot really yeah. saved his hide, and just the once again he kind of played his deck like a. Uh, Mechanized spam. You just bring in the Akaris, but hey, you actually have some proper super heavies to back them up. Yeah, the Jakari spam was really interesting um, because a lot of times when you see people play Baltic Front unspec, they do take a little bit of variation. But you know, like you said, Krat from just like last game, he's not playing mechanized, but it definitely felt like he was kind of playing mechanized. And I guess part of that's because you can just get so much Jakari. As you know, Finland, and then like, what is that? 32 cards of Jakari in the KTs? Yeah. yeah. Like, that, that's a ton. And then the firepower in support of that. So you obviously have the Wilks. Yeah. I mean, look how much heavy armor he brought. The M1 mods, M2 Wilks, the, the glass cannon for the Finns, and then the M1 Mil Wilk with a lot of ASF on top to keep his tanks alive. And while I think Krot had some, or not Krot, Balance had some really good planes that could have been used to deal. With tanks, I don't think he ever felt comfortable enough in you bringing them out. And also on top of that, you do have the really good recon infantry between the Sissies and the Finnish Terminators, mm -hmm. which actually provides you, you know, the better quality infantry support if needed. But I didn't even require that. It was just Yukaris and tanks, just one two combo. Yeah, we only saw the Finnish Terminators really once in the engagement, and that's off the get go. And I don't think they actually played that big of a role. So okay. really. You know, it was a really interesting game. It was de the pacing was very different from last week's and week one. So I'm curious to see next week going into it, you know, game four, how they, you know, react to that and see what balance does to try and even it up. Yeah, because we're in a 2-1 for Crot here. So we'll see if, yeah, balance can come in and try to get it back or real Crot take the big dub. You have to tune in next week. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and as usual... Please just take it easy.